right now, I'm gonna show you how many cool, fun, creative, nature journaling potential ideas there are waiting for you in your fridge right now. First, we're gonna take out a bunch of things from the fridge and do a simple sketch collection. Now, doing a collection is one of the most basic nature journaling approaches. However, I'm usually doing it out in nature. In this case, I'm gonna push my comfort zone a little bit and do it with items, everyday items for my fridge. So I started with a basic layout and I used a Tombow brush pin number 910 for that. It has that nice pale peach color that allows me to set in a, a real basic sort of framework that I will use for these sketches. And a really good thing to do for this, especially if you're drawing items that you don't normally draw, is to set a time limit. I spent about two minutes, a, a maximum of two minutes on each of these sketches, and that way I don't get too overwhelmed by any of them. And I must admit, there were a couple times, especially after drawing the fennel, and drawing some of these cans and jars that I was about to give up on this whole idea and I felt like my drawings were looking pretty bad. And that just goes to show that there's a lot of things that we might not normally practice drawing. So doing this collection with items that you have at home, items that you take for granted and look at every day is actually a really good idea. And so I basically laid out the, the format for these images and I didn't totally stick to it, but you can see that the the way that I use the Tombow pen is like the non-photo blue pencil and it, it kind of fades into the background. So I've added in my color and I'm using my double-sided brush pen for the lettering. So I'm gonna go through and ask a bunch of questions on each of these. And I laid out for my lettering and, and made a plan, but um, once I get to, oh, I realized that I got to the letter G and, and that lowercase letter goes down below the line. So I just kind of fudge that a little bit. But now I'm going to go through and add um, a title to each one. So the eggs, the fennel, the lime, and then I'm going to write a question for each one. And this would be a really good way to give some structure to your collection is to spend, just do two minute sketches on each item and then to ask two questions for each, each item. Questions, things that you're curious about. And by doing that, that really makes this into a legit nature journaling activity. Just doing a collection is sort of low hanging fruit as far as nature journaling is concerned. So let's try something a little more challenging. Remember, nature journaling is not just about pretty pictures. So while I was doing this sketch collection, I had the question of how many leaves are there in this Napa cabbage? So right now, let's do a little guessing and quantification. So you can at home write down how many leaves you think there are in this Napa cabbage, and I'll make my guess. Then we will see how many there are. Wow, this is really crazy. As I get closer to the middle, I realize there's all of these smaller leaves that I don't know if I should count those also, but do you see those small leaves? And there's even uh, a flower bud there in the very center. Six. 47, 48. So 
I'm going to make an arbitrary decision and decide not to count these side little buds. And I got all the way up to 48 leaves. But as you can see, it's sort of like a fractal where it's a never, it's almost a never ending count because there's all of these side buds that I could potentially count. So my curiosity has definitely been stimulated by this and I could go into a lot more lines of inquiry just from following this one question. So even though with me personally, numbers are the nature journaling language that I most often neglect, by following this numbers question, it's led me to a line of curiosity that I never otherwise would have found. So far, we have used images, numbers, in our nature journal, in the refrigerator. Now, let's do a classic nature journaling technique that can be done completely with words because images, words, and numbers are the three languages of nature journaling. And my curiosity was stimulated by this particular Napa cabbage core. So I'm going to do, and I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of exercise with this particular object. And you can do this with people out loud or you can write it down in your nature journal. So I noticed that there seemed to be some small flowers growing out of the middle. I also noticed that there's lots of small leaves that I didn't count in my leaf count and that these leaves seem to be growing out in clusters such as buds, like as if they were new growth. I noticed that there's almost like a tower-like pattern and this branching where the leaves came off. I noticed that it gets narrower and narrower and I noticed that as I got closer to the core, there were more and more leaves. I wonder if there's a way I could graphically represent that. Now I'm shifting into the I wonder part of the exercise in which I ask questions. I wonder if each one of these could grow into a completely new plant. I wonder how the flower grows out the top if the cabbage is so closed. I wonder how long it takes before these flowers are mature. I wonder if they still could mature even though the plant has been cut off from its roots. I wonder if this part tastes different than the part that is green. I wonder what it requires to turn green. I wonder why there's some green in these pieces down here, but none in these pieces up here. I wonder how many of these there are in the average Napa cabbage. So those are all examples of questions that you could ask in the I wonder stage. Now, the third stage is it reminds me of. So, it reminds me of some kind of medieval castle on, on a hill with lots of turrets and even this part with the little ramparts where archers would be hiding. It reminds me of some kind of um, like spaceship or the, um, the front of some type of invertebrate like with a weird mouth proboscis. So that it reminds me of is an opportunity for you to connect it with other ideas. The other thing it reminds me of is I was reading a seed saving book recently about cabbages that said on cabbages they have to cut an X in the top of the cabbage to allow for the flower shoot to come out. Now that I gave you three classic and comprehensive nature journaling prompts to use in your fridge, I'm going to give you a couple more ideas. Why not do a comic or process nature journal sketch of cooking or preparing some type of food from your fridge? You could also do a before and after for a cooked or frozen food item. You could also use words and do taste and describes. Another awesome and learning potential would be to make up experiments. One that I'm going to try is freezing times. Try freezing different liquids in an ice cube tray and measure how long each one takes to freeze. You could also do a color palette of your fridge representing the different colors that are represented there or even experimenting to see if any of your foods make good pigments by wiping them on the page. You could also grow, ferment, or putrefy intentionally things in there and watch their progress and do a change over time. 
a moldy item or a fermented food such as sauerkraut would be really fun or you could grow certain things such as carrots often will grow sprouts in there so you could follow them over time. Another one that I want to try is understanding what calories mean. So a lot of our foods have labels that describe calories, but do you know the definition of a calorie? It actually has to do with burning things. So I thought, wouldn't it be fun to take out different things from your fridge, look at the calorie description of them on the nutrition facts, and then try burning them and see how they burn. You could also do other types of doodle diagrams in your fridge. So there's a lot of things that you can do in there. And if you got some new ideas or new inspiration for nature journaling from this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because there's gonna be a lot more cool and inspirational, motivational, and actionable videos coming out soon. And if you can't wait all the way until next week for the next episode of the show, Check out these two videos here.